Welcome back to the IGCSE Computer Science Code 0478 Guide. In this chapter, we will be discussing about computer architecture. You will learn about operating systems, interrupts and buffers, types of buses, volume and architecture inside a CPU, and the fetch execute cycle. What is an operating system? An operating system is software that runs in the background of computer systems, managing its basic functions. For example, Windows and Mac OS are single-user, multitasking operating systems. When a computer is first powered on, the startup programs from the ROM are loaded into the computer's memory. It checks the functions of the hardware, processor, internal memory, and BIOS or basic input-output system to make sure they, are, they all function properly. If no errors are found, the operating system is then loaded into memory. Here are some of the main functions of an operating system. Interrupts and buffers. An interrupt is a signal sent from a device or software to the processor which temporarily stops what it is currently doing and to service the interrupt. An interrupt handler is used to prioritize interrupts and place them in a queue. It also saves the status of the current task being run by the user so they can resume it after the interrupt has been serviced. Interrupts can occur when 1. A disk drive is ready to receive data. 2. A paper jam has occurred in the printer. Three. The control alt shift keys are pressed and number four a software error has occurred interrupts allow computers to carry out several tasks or open several windows at a time for example interrupts allow us to listen to music while downloading a file from the internet at the same time on the other hand a buffer is a temporary memory area Buffers are usually filled by the processor or memory unit and emptied to the hardware device where an operation is carried out. Without them, processors would spend a majority of their time idle to wait for a hardware device to complete its operation. For example, buffers are used when streaming a video on the internet. This makes sure that the video keeps on playing and does not have to stop to receive more data from the internet. Buffers and interrupts are often used to carry out the functions in a modern computer. The Von Neumann Architecture The idea of a computer system in which programs and data are stored in a memory and move between the memory and processor is called the Von Neumann Architecture. The figure below shows the connections of buses used in the Von Neumann Architecture. A bus is a set of wires that connect two or more components within a computer system. The von Neumann architecture makes use of three buses. They include the address bus, which carries signals related to addresses between the processor and memory, the data bus, which carries signals between the processor, memory unit, and input or output devices, and the control bus which carries signals related to control operations within the computer, such as read and write operations. The address bus carries signals in one direction only, so it is known as unidirectional. The data bus carries signals in both directions, making it bidirectional, and the control bus carries signals in a unidirectional and bidirectional manner. On the diagram to the right, we can see the directions of each bus inside a CPU. Number one, memory unit. It is made up of a number of partitions. Each partition contains an address and content. Addresses indicate the location of data, while contents contain the data stored. The memory unit also contains registers which are needed so that data can be manipulated within the computer. A register is simply a high-speed storage area within a computer. The two types of registers in the memory unit are number one, 
a memory address register or MAR. It holds the memory location of an instruction which has not been executed yet. Number two, memory data register or MDR. It holds the data being transferred to and from the memory. Number two, processor. It contains the arithmetic logic unit or ALU, which is responsible for logic such as OR and NAND and arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, etc. Control unit. The control unit consists of a program counter or PC and the current instruction register or CIR. The CIR contains the current instruction being processed while the PC contains the address of the next instruction to be processed. Input devices are used to convert external data into a form understood by the computer, while output devices are used to show the results of computer processing in a form understood by humans. Note that output and input devices are not part of the CPU. Moving on to the fetch execute cycle. The fetch execute cycle is a process in which a processor fetches data from the memory, decodes the data into instructions it can understand, and finally sends signals to various components of the computer system where the instruction is executed. As stated in the previous slide, it is important to know that the CIR contains the current instruction being processed while the PC contains the address of the next instruction to be processed. The fetch execute cycle can be explained as below. Number one, the program counter contains the address of the next instruction. Number two, the address in the program counter is copied to the memory address register using the address bus. Number three, the contents of the specific memory address register is temporarily copied into the memory data register. Number four, the contents of the memory data register is copied and placed in the current instruction register. Number five, the value in the program counter is incremented by one or moved up by one so that the next instruction can be processed. And number six, the instruction is decoded and executed by sending signals via the control bus to specific components in the computer. By the end of this video, you should know what an operating system is, what a buffer and interrupt is, the von Neumann architecture and the buses involved in it, the components of a CPU, and the fetch execute cycle. The resources used in the making of this video is shown to the right. I hope that you have found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in chapter 5, which will be input and output devices.